let's get this going. Of course, they start screaming again. I just get everybody quiet, and then they start popping off again. God. Just always sliding into home plate here, trying to get everybody to quiet down so I can get the stream going. <laughs> anyway, guys, what's up? It is the Ham Radio Crash Course. We're doing a bit different of a format here. It's going to be, obviously, a news story. Uh, with a bit of a background on what that news story is all about, the whole story of what DXing is. Before we get to that, let's do some of our housekeeping. I got a new mic. Uh, the Blue Yeti mic is what I'm talking on right now. Hopefully it sounds it sounds good. I hope it sounds good. Let's see. I need to mute this guy. Okay, good. We're live. <laughs> good. And uh, let's see what else we got. Of course, I lost all my notes. There we go. Uh, let's see. I've got a cold. It feels like it's been over a week since I talked to everybody last because I've had this horrible cold. So if you hear me like mute or do anything, it's because I've got this like sinus congestion thing going on. So I apologize beforehand. But that said, new mic. Awesome. Uh, cold. Sorry about that. Uh, the antenna video. Wow. Well, you can see here's, here's part of it. Uh, I've been working on the antenna video. That should be coming out very soon. Because uh, right after that, I want to do the X5105 video. <clears throat> and I got to tell you the truth, I really like the X5105. Uh, after my unboxing, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the video, uh, I learned all kinds of cool things about it. So I'm absolutely in love with the radio as it sits right now. I'm going to be working on digital will be the next thing. Once I can figure out digital, then it's on. Then it's a hard recommendation. Uh, while we're here doing the live stream, if any of you guys are so inclined, I'm on uh, 3795, that's 80 meters. I'm just monitoring right now, I'm on, not transmitting or anything like that, but if anybody comes on, we could do a live QSO kind of thing, so that'd be kind of cool. And we'll be doing a live Q&A kind of at the end of the whole stream. Without further ado, what's up with the brew crew? Since we're not going to see each other before Valentine's Day, I've got my bloody Valentine ale made by Alesmith Brewing Company. Uh, this is a, as far as ales go, it's kind of funny. This is a uh, lighter ale. It's 6.66% alcohol by volume. I think that's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and read this to you because I like uh, gimmicky kind of beers. Don't spend this single, aware single awareness day alone. Grab a beer. This red-blooded cousin of the evil dead red ale or Halloween brew is a beautiful crimson colored notes of caramel, toast, and bittersweet chocolate. Balance an intense bouquet of floral hops aromas that we know you'll fall in love with. The finish leaves a pleasant, full-bodied sweetness to the palate that won't spread angry rumors about you at all. Won't spread angry rumors about you to all. Uh, oh, uh, was, oh, uh, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> I like this. Pair this with Jilted Lovers, Reservations for One, or your favorite emo album. And it does recommend serving at 45 to 50 degrees. I like when uh, breweries do that, when they recommend a temperature. I think that's kind of cool. Let's crack her open. Let's crack open this crispy boy. Oh, oh yeah. Well, happy Friday to everybody. Uh, like I said, it feels like it's been weeks since we did this last because I have been sick. So here we go. We've got a brewery snifter, the brewery in Placentia, California. Really good brewery. If you're, ooh, yeah, that is light. Oh, look at that. Let's give it a little tilt. I don't like too much head. You know what I'm saying? So we've got a couple of people in chat that are talking it up, getting ready for the, the stream tonight. We got one, Ray, got his call sign, KN4JIZ. KN4JIZ. So not the easiest call sign in, uh, in Morse code on the back end there. <clears throat> the I's easy. You'll get it, though. You'll get it. Mm. Well, thank you, Brew Crew, for those that are on the Patreon. Thanks for funding the beer for this uh, this stream. If you're interested in funding beers or any of the other rewards I've got, oh, that reminds me, I sent out the newsletter, my first newsletter last week. We talked about uh, DMR Radio and the uh, X5105 uh, QRP. A little bit. A lot of philosophy, theory, my, my worldview when it comes to those kind of things. That's what the, new, the newsletter is about. It's not so much how-tos. It's more like what I think, history stuff, all that. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Sorry about the cold. All right. So without further ado, what is DXing? Well, the D is distance and the X is unknown. 
put quite simply, DX can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people, and it's meant a lot of things to a lot of different people throughout time. It generally means making a long-distance contact. Uh, whatever that means, distance-wise, the capability of the frequency you're operating on, whatever it is. <clears throat> a lot of people, whew, a lot of people have uh, viewed it as uh, bridging the gap between countries. So if you're in the Americas making an Asian contact or a European contact, right, or down to South America contact, that would be a really good DX destination, a DX contact. Um, let me switch over here. I got some websites I can show you here that are going to help. So this is the uh, dxwatch.com. DX Watch is great. Um, it tells you, well, let me, I kind of just threw you in the deep end. DXing can happen uh, fortuitously. You just randomly happen uh, based off of good propagation to talk to somebody that's in a far off land and you exchange a QSO. QSO means conversation, QSO. And uh, <clears throat> you could be so inclined to exchange uh QSL cards, if you have those, if you want to get into that side, or you could just log your contact in one of the many uh, contact logging softwares in the future, which is a good idea for a video. I should do one of those on the contact logging softwares. Zombie. So uh, Zombie Warrior 88 says, I don't know if you remember me or not, but we met in person at the meetup back in 2016. I was the shy, awkward dude. It's cool, man. Uh, wait, now, so uh, the meetup in 2016. Where was it at? Can you post where was it at? Because we did a couple of meetups. So I, I need a little clarification. Not that there's a lot of people that were awkward, but. Uh, so I love lasers asks, would a butternut antenna be good for DX? So here's here's the general comment about DX. <clears throat> any antenna you have on the air is going to be better than no antenna. And if your butternut, if you're deciding to buy an antenna and the butternut is the one you're thinking about, then yeah, it would be good for DX because right now you got nothing. Uh, if you're talking about like the best DX antenna, you're mainly going to be looking at beam antennas, horizontal um, polarization beam antennas. Those are the ones when you're driving down the freeway and you see the big towers and they may have a rotor. Well, they have a rotator. And they have a, a long arm with a driven or one driven element and then lots of pairs of legs. Like a modified TV antenna, but they don't have an arrow shape. They're flat. Those are beam antennas or Yaggies. What they're used for is driving your RF in a certain area or picking up RF in a certain area. So if you were trying to do a DX, like if you were using DXWatch.com, and let's see what's uh, looks like Puerto Rico. You could aim your antenna, point it at Puerto Rico, and try and make a contact. <clears throat> or is that Colombia? Gosh, I apologize about the... Uh, I didn't know how well I was going to do. I kept working on my voice at, today. I, uh, I did all kinds of stuff, gargled, all that goodness. And I'm still... It's, it's an allergies thing, I guess. But my family all has the flu. It's been crazy. Yeah, so uh, Daryl says... Uh, DXing in the CB world is called skip talking and uh, skip there's another name for it in, in ham radio but basically you're skipping over the uh, the atmosphere you're using the the RF will will travel through some part of the atmosphere hit one part of it and then bounce and come back down and it gives you this really long uh, path around around the uh, around the earth or wherever you're trying to hit so very good okay so I got sidetracked a bit so you have a station. A lot of people are going to be using 100 watt stations, all bands, all mode stations. That uh, ICOM 7300 that I've been looking at is a good example of a station like that. A newer one, but but any ham radio will be able to do it as long as it's single sideband and CW. You're going to do very well, or you're going to do better with CW, obviously, because you're going to be able to go further and still be heard. The idea. Um, amongst anything is based off of propagation, some luck, and what time of day you're operating, what frequencies you're operating, and if the two parties are awake at the same time, you'll be able to work them. Uh, frequencies do matter, so in case in point, if you pull up while you're watching this, if you pull up dxwatch.com, you can see the frequencies that a lot of people are working, and it seems like the last five frequencies are all 80 meters. Before that, 
a lot of 40 meters. So as we get further in the evening, uh, people, people, uh, oh, in the coffee shop. Okay. Yeah. Zomb going back to Zombie Warrior. Yeah. Um, I think there were, there was about six people there. I was with my wife, if I remember correctly. Right? I think so. That was fun. We talked a lot about YouTube, right? How to YouTube. Uh, speaking of that, side recommendation. Every Thursday, if you go to gunchannels.com, there's a guy on, the, guy on there called Clovertack. Uh, I hop into some of his, his streams, and he talks about how to YouTube, how to do better at the YouTube game. You're assuming you already make good videos. How do you take them to the next level as far as like getting them uh, shown on the search engine, getting affiliates, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested, <coughs> wow, sorry. If you're interested, hop on over to gunshells.com and check out CloverTac. Okay, so you've got your base station set up. Say in this case, we're going to switch over. I'm already on 80 meters. Uh, but what we'll do a little bit later as, as the stream gets a little bit on or until my voice falls out, we'll actually try and find some of these DXers. And it's easy because we've got the internet, dxwatch.com, for example. Um, we're just going to pull up those frequencies and we're going to listen. And we may hear people. What will often happen is you're going to hear the people that are chasing the DXers, but you may not hear the destination you're trying to hit. That's for a number of reasons. The people that are um, trying to hit the DXer may be in between you and the DX location and they have a stronger signal to you <coughs> or um, any number of things. So... The reason, though, why um, we're talking about this, so now that you've got an understanding of, of DX, right, it just means really long-distance communication. This is Bouvet Island. Um, in 2016, there was a guy who wanted to do a one-man expedition to Bouvet Island. So now, now that you understand DXing, let me explain de-expedition. There are areas, a lot of islands, some are countries that are politically hospi uh, not hospitable to anyone including ham radio operators, that uh, for whatever reason, people create these expensive, very expensive in the case of Bouvet, expeditions to go travel to the area to set up radio and then work contacts. And people will give money, donations, to actually get the individual to go. Case in point, this guy, this Bouvet Island 2016 expedition, he was asking for $250,000 for a one-man expedition Three months he was going to live on Bouvet. Understand, see the, the picture of the globe? Bouvet is kind of like in between Africa and South America, and it's off the tip of Antarctica. It's considered one of the most remote, desolate islands anywhere. And this guy wanted to go spend three months there in these, like, like uh, bubbles, like this big, hard plastic bubble that he could live out of. You can't beach land a ship on Bouvet. you got to use helicopters. <clears throat> the last time there was an expedition to Bouvet was 30 years ago, and they didn't do many contacts. So what happened was, it was I believe it was a 10-man crew. Actually, why don't we just pull it up? We can pull up their website. The Bouvet Island D expedition was set to take off in early 2018, and it did. Everything was going to plan. That's actually the ship that they chartered uh, with a helicopter pad to land the equipment onto the island. And it was, for all intents and purposes, going great. They had a great number of contributors. Everybody was really positively talking about it and thinking about it. And uh, DX Engineering, the, the company that makes antennas and other things, lots of, lots of companies came out and provided equipment. Uh, just It would, it would just seem like it was going to be just amazing. Well... In short, what happened was they uh, the, the ship made it off the coast of Bouvet. They stayed there for a couple of days. And due to horrible weather conditions, uh, yeah, right here, the captain has decided in the best interest of safety to go back to Cape Town. So understand they were dealing with massive winds and the winds have to die down a little bit to be able to take off with the helicopter to drop them off. And they were expecting to stay there for two weeks, right? They were going to get dropped off and then, then the ship would come back from and collect them. Um, it was, I believe, I don't have the exact numbers and, and the numbers, the exact numbers don't exactly matter. $750,000 to a million dollars in donations to get to Bouvet Island. So on one hand, it's amazing that Ham, hams are able to to muster up those kind of funds to to get to these locations and understand Bouvet is 
the second or third most requested place for DX. And that means DXers, hardcore DXers that chase these activations like we just saw on, on DX Watch, they want Bouvet very badly. Particularly since it's only been 30, it's been 30 years since the last time they did an expedition. So Bouvet was potentially very challenging, very interesting, um, but it didn't ultimately work out. What's number one, you may ask? North Korea. North Korea and then tied for two, second or third is Kosovo. Some of the rules in Kosovo have changed recently, so I believe that uh, they, they will be doing DX from Kosovo in the future. I, I find the whole concept amazing. I, I love the concept of DXing alone. So I, I like to DX. A uh, little fun story, actually. Let me hope I don't nail a camera right here. So one of my favorite things is to DX with this. Oh, I did. I bopped a camera. Uh, is with my Texan PL660 shortwave. I love uh, DXing with this. And and what, what do I mean by DXing? Well, whenever you're picking up like Radio Cuba or Radio China or Radio Australia on, on shortwave, that's a DX. Now, <clears throat> it's not completely unknown, but it's still a long distance communication. And there are ways to do signal reports because it's not truly a QSO, you're not exchanging transmissions. Uh, it's not a two way communication, but you can give a signal report and often they'll send you a QSL card. It's a lot. If you look up shortwave uh, QSL cards, there's a lot. It's very cool. So, um, recap it a bit. Let me go back here. This guy had some good history. So, pretty interesting story. Bouvet uh, was a Norwegian expedition in 1927. They laid claim to Bouvet. This is Bouvet Island. <laughs> Look how desolate that thing is. Just covered in, in snow and ice. Here's a side picture from the north side. Now, uh, there is a observation center or a nature reserve building, which is oh there we go, which is really just a uh, a cargo container that the Norwegians call a research station. <laughs> it's in quotes container. <coughs> <coughs> Now, that's on the northwest side of the island, which is blocked by this huge mountain, which makes the eastern side difficult for DX. Hey, everybody in the chat, by the way, is coming in late. No big deal. Don't worry. So let's, let's talk through some of the logistics here. So this, guy does, this, this guy's website is great. Uh, QSL.net. Uh, on I'll post the link, but on for WW forward slash Bouvet 2016, if you're at all interested in Bouvet, which I find stuff like this fascinating. So he, all the radio expeditions uh, have been on the left, far left side. So that basically blocks out some of the right-hand side of going to Africa, Europe, etc. Now, the idea was that he would be on the north side of the island. Very cool. Now, that's not what the Bouvet expedition was that just was canceled recently, but I find this this pursuit. Hey, Ray Ray M, watching from Japan. Awesome. Um, just a reminder, too, I'm on 3.795 on, that's 80 meters. So if you want to try and hop on and hit me with a single sideband, or if you want to do CW, we can hop down lower on the band. But that would be interesting if any of you have an HF rig set up. <coughs> Anyway, oh yeah, I thought this was cool too. <laughs> this little ball uh, structure. Again, this is the guy that he, this was his plan, uh, 2016. This is what he wanted to do. He wanted to go to Bouvet and get dropped off in a helicopter and then live there for three months. Could you imagine just working radio for three months? Because he said he had a goal of 100,000 QSOs. Uh, divide the number of hours in a day across three months against 100,000. And that tells you how many QSOs he has to make in a minute. That's impressive. That's a lot of QSOs. Hiya Hashnasi, 7-3. Thank you, Jody. Oh, yeah, Jody. What's up, Jody? Got my buddy Biker Bob. He's watching from Canada. Ray Ray M again. This is from Japan. So let's go back to the expedition here. So you can read through the blog, which that's actually the picture they took uh, when they, February 1st, is anchored off the east side of Bouvet. Winds are 35 to 40 knots, and the ship is pitching and rolling up to 30 degrees. 
you can't fly a helicopter in, in situations like that. So they waited two days for the captain, uh, citing, I believe they had an engine problem, to turn around and go back. They ended up being diverted to um, South Africa, Cape Town, South Africa. <clears throat> all in all, very sad. Um, but, but... It kind of puts DXing on the map again, and I and I I'm guessing I'm guessing it's not for loss. the The team that put this together, I bet they're probably even more uh, pushed and and ag aggressively going to seek going back to Bouvet. And um, I'll be honest, part of the reason why I started getting back into ham radio was I I listened to Ham Nation, which is a podcast on the uh, the Twit. The Twit Network, which is, uh, what's the guy's name? The PC self-help guy. Leo Laporte. Leo Laporte has a podcast station, and they have this thing called Ham Nation. It's this panel of, of all these different ham radio people, including uh, Gordo, Gordon West. And <clears throat> for me, I like the outdoor aspect of ham radio. I like going outside. I like field day. I like QRP radios like my, like this um x5105 which i said my which could kind of tell you even though i was given a uh just an evaluation unit that technically i need to send back it might not be going back <laughs> i'll be honest so i always like portable right let me let me switch back over here so i like portable i like my balfangs obviously you've seen that i like my more expensive handhelds which i use i love aprs and i like i like qrp QRP and, and handhelds and all that stuff, not the greatest for DXing unless you're going to go way up on a mountain. And even then, you're, you're not going to do that hot. You really do need a, a really nice antenna setup and a, and a nice, proper base station radio. And even though the, the 7300 is it's a base station, base station in a box, you can take it out in the field, though, because it's not too big. It's not too cumbersome. So that's Bouvet was part of the reason why I was like setting up a goal to get to saving up my, my ducats to go buy this uh, 7300. Now, obviously, I don't have the 7300. Otherwise, I'd be talking about it a lot. So um, <coughs> I'm not saying the, the uh, buffet issues were fortuitous. This is horrible. I think that it would have been awesome if they were able to complete their mission. But I would have been, like, not able to participate. So maybe I'll get a second chance at participating. I didn't want this to happen. I didn't wish for this to happen. It was almost happened anyway. What did, uh, where are you at, Ray Ray? I just moved back to the States from Okinawa. Uh, he is in Yokosuka temporarily. Uh, Aki Harbor, where it's at, right? Is that where all the, the weebs are at, right? Is that the place to go for the video games? Where's that? Shibu uh, I can't remember my Japanese provinces. I've never been to Japan. But I am kind of a weeb, aside from being a hipster, so that makes sense. <clears throat> so if there's any questions specifically regarding DXing or Bouvet or anything along those lines, go ahead and send them now and we'll start the ball rolling because I think I'm going to start uh, trying to pull up some some of these DX watch locations. Oh, another shout out before we switch over to that. Let me switch back here. There is a link to anyone can enjoy DXing uh, from the ARRL. It's uh, about the fourth link, I believe, in the description down below. You can go check this out. They include a link to DX Watch. Very cool. Very cool intro level like blog for for DXing, which again I find fascinating. This is where I like where I where I envision this kind of whole stream going is we talk about things like this. It may not be your bag, it may not be your ham radio love interest for the for the moment, but uh, knowing about DXing is awesome. You know, satellite may not be your bag, but knowing about it is is awesome. So in case you think, hey, you know, change your mind in the future, I may want to get involved in that that whole satellite thing, right? So that's really what I really like to do. Oh, nice ham shops in Akihabara. Whoo, I didn't know that. So I can go weave out and play video games and go get ham gear. Japan is uh, one of the most prolific ham radio nations in the world. I believe per capita they have the most licensed uh, individuals too. Let me get back out of ham here. So anyway, the idea here, ham radio 
the ham radio crash course is I, I, I brought some people into the hobby, gotten their license, and so they may be asking themselves, what do we do next? Well, we're going to talk about that and hopefully answer all your questions as we go. So, <coughs> all right, so let's see. What do we got? Um, some of these things are pretty cool. Can I? I can't really zoom in much. Hopefully you can see that okay. Tell me if you can see it okay. If you go full screen, you can probably see this. Uh, no, I've never done any kind of DXing on a handheld. And I, I don't know how well that would work, to be honest with you. So I want to point out that as we're looking at this, there's a lot of RIDI, R-T-T-Y, radio teletype. That's a digital mode. Uh, I, and I don't have, well, I have a radio that can do digital, but it's not set up right now. And, and I'm putting all my focus on the 5105 right now. So we're not going to focus on any digital. We're going to try and get single sideband or C, um, CW. Okay, so what do we got? What's one that we might be able to hit? European Russia, Slovenia. The Canary Island, I've hit the Canary Islands before, but he's on Riddy. Uh, Greece, Kosovo, Kosovo, see there's your Kosovo. Kosovo doors are open, I guess, for DX, so that's that's super cool. Um, he's on 40, I doubt we can hit 40, but what the hell, let's, we can dream, right? So he is on, oh. I just like to see if I can hit him. He uh just just hear his station. So he's on sixty four. Oop. So I don't know what the standard ready uh, frequencies are. But there are definitely people out on. You can hear them. What's well, tones? That's digital. Let's switch over to my. Pretty low, pretty low tones. Kosovo, that'd be cool. Hi, Ice Bomb. What's up, buddy? I'd like to see if we can find a uh, like a Japanese contact. Oh, Japanese contact. When was uh, three twenty one? He is doing Riddy CQ WW Riddy WPX contest. <coughs> he is on twenty. That's not gonna work. Notice how I'm saying that's not gonna work because he's on twenty. Uh, he's on twenty meters. We're not gonna be able to hit twenty meters. If you've ever played around with a, a shortwave radio, then you know that a lot of the frequencies work better at night. Some of them work better in the day. 20 meters is a daytime frequency. Keep that in mind. But we got some people slamming. What about Brazil? <coughs> oh, this is nice. Uh, you have... FN dude, Mr. Hasnasi, you had a hand in getting me to get my ticket. Now I have to study for my gen so I can play in HF, but taking a hike to a mountaintop and seeing how far I can get out with the five watts sounds so cool. Yo, yeah, man, for sure. And if you learn CW, let me turn this down a bit. If you learn CW, uh, you can use this radio. You can. Uh, CW, there are portions of the, of the HF bands that are totally fine for CW. Daryl says, I was wondering why. Oh. <coughs> you were wondering why I haven't done DX on your hand, on a handheld. Uh, so the reason why is most DX is on HF. And going back to the whole bandwidth discussion, most handhelds are FM. We're using single sideband. 
and digital is like the sliver of the sliver. And we're on HF, so we propagate further. Right? So there's a combination of things that work for us in going further using HF than it does in using 2 meter, 70 centimeter by nature, um, and also FM, which not helpful. Hope that makes sense. If it didn't, please ask further questions. True statement about the HTs. You can definitely hit satellites with HTs. I have done it. SO50. Okay, let's get off the digital here. Okay, we got a bunch of uh, DX just popping up. Spain. Spain is interesting. Spain is interesting on 63. Oh, wait. 637. I'm guessing everybody is on ready. A lot of people on the digitals. On them digitals. Can I can I show this to not have ready? I don't have a. I'm not logged in, so. It is pretty interesting though when you uh, when you go over here. <coughs> you um, let me switch back over. So when you're looking at this, so take this guy in Lithuania. If you log in, uh, what this website will do for you is help you like, figure out if it's even possible, if the propagation is good for you and the time of day works. A lot of times, it's just not going to work, and this website will take some of the guessing out of it so you don't even have to bother. Now, there is, a, there is still a certain aspect of you putting hands on a radio and actually tuning it in and, and trying to make the contact. A lot of DX back in the day, back before the Internet was... Um, really tough right because you're kind of on your own you you had people you knew that that had learned things and they kind of knew how propagation worked but the sensors we have now the capabilities that we have now with technology satellite technology uh the way we read the sun regarding sunspots and the so solar waves and the solar storms and all that stuff allow us to kind of predict how propagation will be so um it was a lot more scattershot and haphazard in the past it's a lot more accurate now Uh, Argentina is on ooh, 160. We're not hitting that. United States, usually you don't DX your own state, uh, your own country, I mean. The Falklands is pretty cool. On FT8, see, now that, we're doing a whole video on FT8, guys. So, I've got some parts coming in the mail so that I can build up a, uh, a cable. In fact, I've already got the cable. Where is my cable? I've got this crazy little cable with this crazy connector that goes to the uh, the 5105. Once I hook that up to a breadboard and, and do all the pinouts, I'll be able to connect it to my computer, and then I'll be connected also with the USB cable, and we'll be we'll be doing digital. We'll be hitting that FT8. I really uh, I was bummed. A lot of the reasons why I don't recommend that LNR LD5 is it was a digital radio kind of in name only you can't do like full digital and so ft8 never worked and it bummed me out ft8 is like the new digital mode on the block and all the cool kids are, are using it right now and i can't get on it it's bumming me out bum me out bad i can do whisper but not not ft8 that's really what i want to be i want to be in that whisper uh, that ft8 granada grenada i mean <coughs> Okay, what's the most... This is Lithuania? No, it's Argentina. The Th Republic of Germany. Hungary. Asiatic Russia. Ooh, we should... No, it's... What's he on? I don't even know what O-K-E-A... So there's codes in here, too, that I don't, I don't know, but it never stopped me from trying, right, guys? So they're on 3523... Oh man, there's lots of activity on 80. Oh, went too far. It 
switch over and see how we do. <coughs> hey, what's going on? L uh, Lightcom88 just joined. Basically, I'm trying not to die. I've got a cold, and it's all up in my head. I'm trying not to cough on camera. I'm trying to do a little DXing. It's a QRP radio, though, so really we're just going to receive. We're not going to try and make any serious comms because that would be kind of... It's not really possible, I'll be honest. 5 watts versus 100 watts is a big jump. How are you doing? How is everybody doing? Um, I will I will mention one thing because I don't want to forget. Uh, I have put two antennas on the the Amazon influencer store, the Nagoya seven seven one and the seven seventeen. <coughs> excuse me. The Cliff Notes is those are probably the best you're going to do on a Baofeng. I'll be honest, this antenna video has been kicking my butt because there's some realities that I didn't know when I went into it. Some real technical realities that I'll talk more on the video uh, that I was not expecting. HTs are kind of a little bit of black magic, I'll be honest. When people say an HT antenna is just a dummy load, a, a glorified dummy load, they're not, they're not wrong. All right, so we got any Q&A? Any questions and answers? Because right now we're not we're not getting anybody. We should just hop around the 80s that we can. Yes, my mic sounds better because I have a brand new mic. <laughs> I dropped a pretty good chunk of gas on a decent mic. It's very nice. <clears throat> I very much like it. it. Sounds really good. And my voice is horrible. So if it makes me sound good right now, then either last week was really bad or um, or it's really good. Um, it's not that the diamond, well, uh, case in point, that diamond is horrible. People ask me to look at the stubby diamond. So the problem that you have is a lot of diamond antennas are, um, male versus female. <coughs> right? Your connectors. The Japanese HTs don't really use the same connector as the Baofeng. Right? That's that's kind of important to understand. In fact, well, here, speak of the devil. My uh, my FT60, my Yesu FT60, my my favorite little brick radio, my favorite receiver. What's it rocking? A diamond. And what uh, what is the connector? Female SMA to male on the antenna. See the the problem there? That's not the the way Balfe, uh, Balfangs do it. They don't they don't use the same connector. So I there may be diamonds out there. I I didn't look into them. In fact, I can, but I only bought five. I mean, if you think about it, I'm, I bought five antennas, and I'm, I'm not really going to use them. The bad ones in particular are, like, I don't want to use them, and I don't want to give them away because they're garbage. This stubby antenna is horrible, guys. Horrible. 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 Don't use it. Don't ever use it. Let's, um, let's... Let's scout around here a little bit more, and then we'll get on 80, and we'll just poke around a bit. With now, hear the noise. Hear the noise from the X505, uh, the X5105. Uh, awesome. Oh, Lightcom just said, just practice a bunch of CW. I'm on CW Ops lesson six, 20 words per minute. Uh, I think we're gonna do. So I would like to do a 30 minute live stream earlier in the week, and uh, you guys let me know what you think thinking of doing a 30 minute live stream uh, live stream earlier in the week where we just go through and do CW. I'm thinking that would be a lot of fun. A lot of fun for you guys because you're going to learn in a way that um, that I never did. No, in a way that I think helps you learn faster. I have gotten good at transmitting CW, but I'm not good at copying CW. And I think that's what a lot of people would tell you that they've been able, they're good at transmitting, but they're not good at copying. So hopefully we work through copying CW first, and you get really good at that, and then we start moving it up to uh, to transmitting. That sounds like fun. What do you guys think? Okay. <coughs> yeah, we're um. 
Well, this guy's in Utah. That's a DX. No. All right. We're going to leave the DX alone. I'm going to go back over here before we hop into the, uh, the Q&A. Uh, F and Dud says, Simplex low power should be okay to rock the little dude at an event. What are you talking about? Let me go back. Uh, no, Yesu does not. Uh, sorry, I'm going back reading through the comments. The only, uh, the only connector that Yesu, that Baofeng uses that's the same as the Yesu is the original, um, UV3R. UV3R, which I have. <coughs> but the, uh, BFF8, the UV5Rs, do not. They use the, uh, female. It's a male, male, uh, connector to a female antenna. Not the same as the Yesu. Robert Adkin. I have been asked to do the videos on the general class. The problem is is that uh, general class is a lot of, like... Technician is fun because I just stand there and I talk about, like, common sense stuff. And I just generally just work through what I remember common sense-wise. General's, like, no joke. Like, you gotta sit down and, and have some scratch paper and learn the math. And I don't know about a live stream where I'm just doing math and not talking. That seems like a really boring... Really boring. Really boring. Oh, I see. So, uh, FN dude. So, Simplex low power should be okay to rock the little dude at an event. No. <laughs> Cliff note. Cliff note version. That thing can't even do half a mile <laughs> on high power. It's bad. It's real bad. Uh, I'm going to toy around with some other stuff tomorrow to see if my uh, thoughts are accurate. But that thing is garbage garbage Enrique my buddy Enrique from way back in the day ooh my buddy Enrique from way back in the day my first useful venture into radio will be a Midland consumer radio MXT 400 micro mobile 40 watt mobile GMRS radio good <coughs> Yeah, the um, GMR Mobile Forty Watts will be killer because you'll 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 be doing you'll be out there like out there meaning you're gonna you're gonna get out there a lot of power. It's good. Power's good. I mean, no lie. Like, I mean, I like QRP. I like juke. I like being the little guy. But if you can be the big guy, that's cool too. So let's go to the bottom of eighty here. All right, we're at the bottom of eighty. Let's just start working our way up. And I am monitoring the chat as we do this. I'm just trying to give my voice a little break. I heard some uh, sideband. <coughs> Are we on? Lower sideband, yep, filter, yep. Okay. Oh, there's CW. Let me turn it over to CW. <coughs> so the, uh... There's... There we go. That is some very fine gap. Woo! That guy's got like a runaway key. We're in for some more beer. That guy is fast, but, like, messy. Can you hear it okay? Is it coming through all right? Should I bump it up a little bit? It's 
Is that better? That's way too fast. All right. I don't see W out there tonight. That's a good signal. FN dude asks he's building a mobile SDR rig. I'm not even sure what to put for an antenna. Well, it's hard to answer the question because you haven't mentioned what frequencies you want to work. Is this just a receiver to so say like a hack RF that can also transmit? It really depends on what what are you trying to receive? <coughs> got some good signals out there tonight not so much there more CW that's a pretty slow code Good CW out there. <coughs> I'm gonna try and find some single sideband. If I'm doing that, I should probably put it in single sideband. That's digital. God, there's a lot of digital out there. The, the bands are on fire, guys. So this is what's fun about HF is there's like literally something going on at all hours of the night. Look at that. There must be some kind of contest going on. Oh, there is. There is a contest going on. It's the uh, it's the Valentine's Day contest. So, hold on. Uh, young ladies. Okay, women. Women refer to themselves as YLs. Young ladies. Uh, men are referred to as OMs, old men, old man, old whatever. There is a contest going on um, right now on, uh, I think it goes through the weekend, <coughs> where you uh, you just can only score a point if you, you find a, a lady, if you're a dude. If you're a lady, you can find a man. So women should do really, really well in this contest. Robert Adkin. Yeah, man, I I don't understand the con I don't know why there's so many people that are FUDs. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't know what they're protecting. I don't know what what they think they're gonna take with them when they die. Like what what are they doing other than discouraging people from enjoying something? I, I, I never understood it. I really don't. Um with that said, if you're at all interested, go on Facebook, go to the Ham Radio Crash Course, and join. It's a FUD free group. And, and we answer your questions and we talk ham radio. So yeah, this is this is blowing up. There's gotta be a single sideband channel.
Man, there's a lot. There is a lot of stuff going on out there. <coughs> yep. Ice Bomb got it. Oh, so it's not um, single side ban. Daryl Ferris, if you'd like to know what a FUD is, go to my channel and type in FUD. <laughs> Basically, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. It's what causes people to be jerks for no real good reason. Yeah, I just wanted to work our way up there. Lightcom says single sideband phone starts at six point uh, three point six. He's right, but the 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 entire band is is alive because of this contest. So thought it'd be fun to check out. All right, let's. <clears throat> They're way down in the noise. Are you talking about crypto coin? They're talking about Bitcoin. Hey, it's better than talking about the weather like they normally are talking about on ham radio. Sounds like they're getting a bit of jamming too. Uh, Lightcom, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I'm new in a lot of areas of ham radio. I'm, I'm trying not to come across as an expert in any kind of thing because we're all in it together. And I think when you start behaving like an expert, then you start becoming a FUD in your own way, which I don't ever want to be. <clears throat> so I'd rather just be humble and, uh, and have fun like everybody else. And let's explore. All right. Yeah, that's, that's called jamming. Now... There's a lot of jammers out here on ham radio on HTs. When you start effing around on HF, the FCC actually. Is this the Wafu, Wafu, Wafu net? There's a well known jammer uh, that jams the. Something called the. Jeez. <coughs> uh, hey, like, calm. Send me a message. Like, go on. Go send me a message on Facebook. Send me your YouTube channel. Or you can post it in the chat. People go check you out. I just don't know that I'll, I'll be able to remember to go check it out. But yeah, I, I don't have a problem. Well, you can try. Um, just, is that your, your channel name is Lightcom88? Way down in the noise. Where were they?
He said he was in San Diego. Let me let me play around with this a bit. Oh, I can do it. Let me do it this way. You're gonna see me go through the menu a little bit. Okay, so we're at a we're at a nineteen hundred uh, megahertz. I'm sorry, nineteen hundred hertz low pass filter, and that takes some of the noise that that crackles out of it. <coughs> let's uh, let's drop the noise blanker. Did nothing. We have a preamp. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, FN dude is saying there's a lot of uh, pretty explicit comms that go on on ham radio. It's true. Kind of kind of no way around that, I think. Oh, we're going we're going way longer than I wanted to. So let's let's go ahead and, and stop for a second. Switch over to Q and A because <coughs> my voice is gonna kill me. <clears throat> so um, I got a ton of comments on the X5105, and I'll be honest, straight up, I did a poor job with it when I first laid my hands on it. It was just an unboxing. This isn't the review. There will be a review. I will go through um, all the features that I find pertinent. Short Cliff Notes version, if you were on the fence to spend $600 on a radio, and it was between this and the 817, um... The X5105 gets major points over the 817 because the tuner in it is very good. Very good. The 817, um, 815, 817, 817 doesn't even have a tuner. Uh, what the 5105 doesn't have is 2 meter 70 center sideband, which the 817 does. Not that popular of a band, though, so unless you already use it, not that big a deal. <coughs> so, anyway, God, excuse me. Anyway, MFJ, cheers. Uh, it was just an unboxing. <laughs> we'll make another video. All right. Uh, this one was interesting. I've respected everything you've said until I think you largely can carry a gun and have very little familiarization and still deploy it to save your life. Um, I don't want to I don't want to muddy the water between ham radio and firearms, but this was an argument that you've got to work with something for you to really understand how to use it. Uh, and I was saying that radios, to be good at radio, to be good with the radios you have, you can't just be like really novice. Like you may you may be able to figure out a, a Baofeng or a couple of other HTs, but you're not going to be useful outside of that. Um, and I was saying that in comparison to firearms, a lot of firearms, <coughs> once you figure out the battery of arms, it kind of works the same way and it's kind of useful in the same way. So that was that. The point was more about the radio, less about the firearms, so that wasn't supposed to ruffle any feathers. Uh, this one's good. This is very important. Okay, this is very important. If you have a Harbor Freight in your area, you can probably go down there and find this coupon, but there is a coupon going around uh, for a free with any purchase seven-function digital multimeter. I don't know if this does continuity. 
Continuity is the thing I use the most. You know, the tone-based continuity. But this is just a heads up to all the all the people out there. If you're looking for an extra multimeter, this is obviously not the one you'd want to use to stake your life on and be your multimeter. But it's a great throw it in the throw it in the glove box, throw it in the, the car toolkit. Forget about it. There you go. Go check that out. All right. So with that said, uh, thank you to the patrons, Carrie and Michael. You guys are the best. You guys are the 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 shout out crew that get all the. Uh, all the perks, and then the brew crew, the, the guys that are also part of the uh, the Patreon there. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm I'm dying. Again, we got the brewery. Got the brewery. Uh, let's see, let's recap in here. My Bloody Valentine Ale. Pretty good. Give you a quick review. Pretty good. I, I prefer stouts and, and porters uh, to just ales. This is a good ale, though. The thing that always bothers me about ale is that they get too caramely. They start to get like very sugary and they, they can give you a, it feels like they're going to give you a headache when you wake up in the morning. So I try and avoid ales, but it was pretty good. Um, I love lasers. Great name. Great name. Let me go back here. I love lasers is asking. So I've got about 60 books to spend in Amazon credit. What are some cool relate, uh, radio <laughs> related things? I God. I could get that uh, other than a Baofeng. <coughs> um, that is such a wide open question. Like, what What do you mean? <clears throat> like, you're going to... You want an accessory for a Baofeng? You want a standalone radio? Like a receive-only radio? What do you want to do? You want a kit? I want a radio kit to go learn about radio and maybe make your own radio? I got all kinds of recommendations for that. What, what do you mean? I'll wait. You post. I'll wait. Feel free. I'm here. Ask me what you want. FN dude. Thanks, man. Keep on keeping on. Yeah, I know this is probably not my, my highest moment uh, of the of the stream, but appreciate everybody keeping with me. Go through it. <coughs> I'm waiting for I love lasers with his follow-on question. I'm getting all kinds of comments here on the Facebooks, too. What's going on? Where is all these people? They should <laughs> look at all these. I'm getting all these messages on Facebook right now. Why are they not in the chat? <laughs> Why are they not in the chat? Just come ask me the question in the chat. I just posted on my my Hosh Nasty page and the Ham Radio Crash Course. Come to the, the stream. You can ask me live. Uh, with that said. We have had so many people get their license, and uh, when I get a message to, that people got their license. I asked them politely to go to the Ham Radio Crash Course, join it, and then post that you got it. You'll be surprised if you join how many people have gotten their license. Big shout out to my buddy Jeremy, got his license. Uh, not just got his license, but he got his call sign, I think, within a week. That's pretty fast, so great. He's already out there transmitting now with his, uh, with his Baofeng. Laser says, like, I guess, little knick-knack stuff. Got a few Yesus Kenwood and an extra. So things that I could, that could make life easier to prove my HTs. For $65, what would I get that would improve my HTs? <coughs> well, um, so the Yesus and the Kenwoods, a lot of them don't come with docking stations. I would recommend docking stations for them. If you don't already have one, the ability to just uh, take your radio and, and just, just dock it so it's standing up. It's nice. Come in during the day and you can just turn your radio on and dock it and it stays charged without having to fiddle fart around and, and eventually break these rubber grommets off. Those little docking chargers are, are awesome. Uh, your antenna cable. Oh, ha, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Seriously, my Facebook's blowing up. Why are these people not pros? Okay. <coughs> Little lasers, does that work? Go find a uh, docking cable or docking power uh, station for your, for your radios. Awesome. Because then you can do, you can't see it. Uh, I'll 
because it's in like a total travesty but all those uh all that right there is a whole bunch of docking cradles and they're all the radios are out of my desk because i'm playing around with this this antenna stuff but once i clean that up i'll do a video yeah ice bomb also nailed it extra battery capacity bigger batteries better antennas external mics all those are great but i really do like charging i, I like the simplicity of just docking Mark Morse said, been on the air now 12 days, and he's got his call sign. That's awesome. Ray says that his call sign was posted Monday after he tested Saturday. Wow, that's really fast. Yeah, no, there's there's a ton of delay in the chat. I love lasers, so I, I understand. Don't worry about it. Okay, <clears throat> I'm dying, and uh, that's going to be it. I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate everybody. Again, go uh, go to the Ham Radio Crash Course. If you just stumbled on my channel, please subscribe. Hit the little bell. Uh, go to Patreon. Would love to just go check that out. Tell me what you think. And we'll do this again in a week. Hopefully, maybe in the beginning of the week, we'll put together a CW video. And uh, by video, I mean live stream. And then in the antenna video. Soon. Very soon. Daryl Ferris says, so it's okay to dock your radio and have it on and charge at the same time. I've never had a problem because the theory being, let me, I can I can talk through this briefly. Um, when you're plugging into the radio's charge port, you're plugging into the radio. This radio, if you try and PTT while it's connected to the charge cable, it shuts itself down. Vice versa. When you plug it into a docking station, you're connecting to the battery itself, so you're you're fine. You're you're, you're charging the battery, and the and the the radio's depleting the battery via receiving. It's fine, no big deal. Cool. All right, I'm gonna go <coughs> drain my my face. <laughs> Appreciate you guys watching. I don't know where I left all my web pages. Okay, we'll see you later.